But the coefficient of variation is a relative measure of dispersion that explains the variability of a set of data around its mean. Assuming these are five points in a data set represented on a number line, the coefficient of variation is a measure that tells us how dispersed or spread out these data points are from the mean of the data. It is simply defined as the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean and it is often expressed as a percentage. Just like the variance and standard deviation, the coefficient of variation tells us how dispersed the data points are from the mean of the data. So why do we need coefficient of variation? Let me explain. Coefficient of variation is important when you want to compare the variability of different data sets. And it is able to do this very well because as a measure, it expresses the standard deviation of any data set as a percentage of the mean. In so doing, it provides a standardized way to compare the dispersion of different data sets, even if they have different units or vastly different means. Now, because we will divide each data set standard deviation by its own mean, we have standardized a measure that now allows us to compare variability between data sets. So essentially, the coefficient of variation tells us how much spread or dispersion there is in a set of data relative to the average of that data. Thus, a higher coefficient of variation indicates greater variability relative to the mean, while a lower coefficient of variation suggests less variability. Let us explore this interesting concept a little further with an example. Consider two different data sets on the number of hours students spent in the Kashim Ibrahim Library of Ahmadu Bello University, Nigeria in one week. Data set A is from a random sample of five engineering students, while data set B is from a random sample of five medical students. The question is, which of the two groups has less consistency in the library? In other words, which of the data set is more dispersed or which has a higher variability? Take a wild guess. Which do you think? Well, you have to wait till the end of the video to find out. To know the variability in the data, we can compute the variance or the standard deviation, right? Because these are the two most common measures of variability. Let's start by looking at the average time they spent in the library, i.e. let's look at their means. The mean of group A is 2.4 hours while that of B is 12.4 hours. You can cross-check this calculation, but I have already gone ahead to compute these values to save time. So here, it is clear that data set B has a much higher mean, that's 12.4 hours, compared to data set A, which has a mean of just 2.4 hours. This indicates that on average, the values in data set B are significantly larger than those in data set A i.e. the medical students spent significantly more time in the library than the engineering students. Mind you, <laughs> spending time in the library is not the same as reading. I know of students who go to sleep in the library and claim they've spent 12 hours. <laughs> All right. Clearly, we can see that the data from group A are in the single digits, while these from group B are in the double digits. But this doesn't tell us anything about the variability or dispersion. So let's try the variance. Surprisingly, when I computed the variance, it turns out that they both have the same variance, 1.3 hours squared. Hmm. This means that the spread or dispersion of the data points around their respective means is the same in both data sets, using variance as our measure of dispersion. This doesn't sound right. In our mind, we know that these data points are different, but why is the variance measuring the same? But let's go on. So variance is not a good measure to compare variability between two data sets. How about we try another common measure of variation, the standard deviation. However, there's a big problem. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes, you're correct. Unfortunately, again, after computing the standard deviation, both data sets have the same standard deviation, which is 1.14 hours. After all, Standard deviation is simply just the square root of the variance. Hmm. The standard deviation measures the typical deviation of each data points from the mean. So since it's the same for both, this means the absolute variability of both data sets is the same. But again, we know these data sets are different. In fact, if we look closely at data set A, we know that this data, even though it has small values, the data points are very dispersed or spread apart from each other. See, we have the lowest value here as 1, and the next data point is 2, which is twice the value of the lowest. This one is 3 times, and we even have 4 times its value, highly spread out from each other. 
But if we look at data set B, even though they are larger values than in A, the data points are much closer to each other. So let's look, the list value here is 11 and the next is 12. Just one single unit above it. And the highest is 14, just three units above the list value. And this is not even up to one and a half times the number. Unlike data set A, that the highest value was four times the value of the lowest. So the variance and the standard deviation in and of themselves cannot help us to compare variability between two or more data sets. Because these only give the picture of absolute variability but can give us a true picture of relative variability and thus cannot be trusted when comparing the variability of different data sets. So what can we use when we want to compare the variability of two data sets? Enter the coefficient of variation. Like I said in the beginning, the coefficient of variation is simply defined as the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean and it is often expressed as a percentage. That's why you see multiplied by 100%. So let's write the same formula here. We already know their standard deviations and means, so let's compute their coefficient of variation. For data set A, the standard deviation is 1.14 and the mean is 2.4. So the coefficient of variation for A will be 1.14 divided by 2.4 multiplied by 100%. And for B, the standard deviation is the same as A, which is 1.14, but the mean is 12.4 multiplied by 100%. So the coefficient of variation is 47.5% for A and 9.2% for B. So clearly, the data set A has a much higher coefficient of variation as 47.5% compared to data set B, which is just 9.2%. So what does this all imply? Let's start from the mean. The higher mean of data set B clearly shows that its data points are generally of greater magnitude than those of data set A. But this is a measure of central tendency. It does not tell us anything about the variation. However, both data sets have the same absolute variability. The variance is 1.3 hours squared for both of them and the standard deviation 2 for both of them is 1.14 hours. This equal variance and standard deviation suggests that the data points in both data sets are spread out to a similar extent. But we know that this doesn't tell the whole story of variability because their means are very different. The key insight to comparing variability of different data sets is by using the coefficient of variation. Even though the absolute variability, i.e. the standard deviation and variance are the same for both groups, the coefficient of variation is much higher for data set A. This implies that relative to its mean, data set A exhibits much greater variability than data set B. In simpler terms, the fluctuation in data set A are large compared to its average value, while the fluctuations in data set B are small compared to its much larger average value. So with these results, let's go back to our question. Which of these groups has a higher variability? And using the coefficient of variation, we can say that group A has a higher variability than group B. So the medical students are more consistent with their time spent in the library compared to engineering students. So this shows how the coefficient of variation is a very useful measure when comparing two or more data sets. To recap, the coefficient of variation is a relative measure of dispersion that explains the variability in a set of data around its mean. It is simply defined as the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean and it is often expressed as a percentage. It is useful in comparing the variability of different data sets because it expresses the standard deviation as a percentage of the mean and so it provides a standardized way to compare the dispersion of different data sets even if they have different units or vastly different means. A higher coefficient of variation indicates greater variability relative to the mean while a lower coefficient of variation suggests less variability. Awesome. I'll leave you with a super simple exercise to test your understanding of the concept of coefficient of variation using a simple graph. You don't need any calculations here. It's just a straightforward diagram. Which of these two data sets, A or B, would you say has the highest coefficient of variation, assuming they have the same means? Please put your answers in the comment section below. And if you've gained value with this video and you want to support my efforts, do subscribe if you have not yet done so. Also, give this video a thumbs up and share with your friends and colleagues to help them. And if you want to learn more about how coefficient of variation is used in public health, check out this video here. 
and for a full example of how to calculate and interpret coefficient of variation from scratch check out this other video right here see you in the next video and as always thanks for watching